Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and today I'm doing a mod tutorial on Industrial Craft Agriculture. Uh, this mod tutorial will focus on the basics and maybe some of even the intermediary steps required for agriculture in the in newest Industrial Craft update uh, as of version 1.64. Uh, so let's get started uh, building a new little agriculture farm and by then I should be able to show you guys some of the things that I've been able to grow as a result of this agriculture system. So, industrial craft, uh, a mod about number one, having tools that are powered by electricity and of course we're going to have an electric hoe. The electric hoe is crafted like so and you need to charge it in some kind of machine like an MFE or an MFSU. Simply charge it up and you're good to go. And once you've got your electric hoe, you're going to want to find a nice little spot to grow some farmland. So let's lay down a source block of water, and we'll get our electric hoe here and start hoeing and tilling the field. Looks pretty sharp, doesn't it? Oh yeah. From there, we need to get some crops, and crops are crafted like so. Four wooden sticks become two crops. And crops allow you to plant seeds in your farmland for growth. And it's a little bit more advanced version of what you would get if you were to just plant the seeds by yourself. For example, pumpkins and melons can grow within one block instead of requiring two. Uh, all you really have to do here is plant down your crop by right-clicking, as shown, and then plant whatever seeds you're interested in doing on top of it. You can plant regular wheat seeds. You can also plant pumpkin and melon seeds. So let's plant some of these guys right here. Looking good. Uh, you can even plant some sugarcane in your farm here. Nice. And for now, that's the basic gist of what you can do. Why don't we go ahead and just place down our melon seeds as well. There you go. So melon, pumpkin, wheat, and reeds. And we're going to give this a little time to grow. But speaking of growing, there's a couple things we can do to make it speed up. So plants require some sunlight, which is definitely something that'll help and they could use some water. So let's grab a water cell here. There you go. And I'm going to place that water cell inside of an extractor. And as you guys are familiar with, extractors will turn water cells into coolant cells, which are used in nuclear reactors. However, if you run that coolant cell through an extractor once again, you get a hydration cell. And a hydration cell can be used quite a lot of times, as a matter of fact, to help water your plants. Simply right click. and it'll start watering the plants and keeping them nice and healthy. Looking good. The other option for helping your plants grow is to get yourself some fertilizer. Fertilizer is crafted like so. Bone meal plus scrap equals two fertilizer. Or an existing fertilizer plus two scrap. There you go. And you simply take that and right click on your plants to help them grow some more. So fertilizer, light, and water come together to grow your plants. So far, pretty simple. Let's go take a look at some of these plants that have been growing for a little while now. Uh, first off, we've got some pumpkins and melons here. And if you right click on your plants that have grown, you'll notice the pumpkins pop off, as do the melons. And the plants will stay planted and continue to sit there and grow, and grow another set of pumpkins more, or melons or whatever else. And here we've got some reeds. You can just right click to harvest your reeds and they'll start growing up again. Now you'll notice if we head back here that the reeds have grown awfully quickly in comparison to the other plants. That's because each set of plants has certain properties. Uh, how quickly they grow, how resistant they are to being stepped upon, and uh, what kind of uh, resources they give you, and pretty much how many resources they'll give you. So a quantity number. And we can figure out those numbers by opening up a new item called the Cropnalyzer. Let's figure out how this guy works. The Cropnalyzer, as shown here, recipe included, uh, will analyze your plants for you and tell you what they are. Uh, real quick and easy, we can right click on an existing plant to find out what it is. So let's head down here where we've got some wheat that's grown. Right click and it tells us it's wheat, or pumpkins, or melons. Very cool. And if we were to knock one of these things off, so let's go down here to our wheat. Alright, no such luck, let's go with our melons left click to completely dismantle the crop as opposed to right click which just gives you the resources that it produces. And based on luck you have a chance to collect these uh, seed bags here. These are melon seeds because I knocked them off a melon plant. And if I open up my crop analyzer and get a rechargeable battery ready, you need to place your battery up here in the analyzation screen 
and your melon seeds up here. And it'll identify them as a melon, what tier they are, and who discovered them. And run them through again, and you'll discover some qualities of the seeds. They're green, they produce food, and they have a stem. And finally, the last setting will pull down information about their growth, gain, and resistance, which is what I just mentioned. How quickly they grow, how much stuff you'll get from them, and their resistance to trampling. These melon seeds can now be used right back here in your crop to plant again. And they'll quickly grow back up to uh, an adult melon. So now we've been able to harvest our seeds and uh, plant them again. Gives them some fertilizer and water and see what's going on. Now once you have some seeds and you want to grow them, the next step is to start combining them. And this will crossbreed your seeds and cause them to randomly mutate and adapt and grow better qualities. So you can improve those numbers you just saw and you can occasionally get even better results. For example, if we were to head down here and analyze this set of reeds, you'll notice that the growth weight is zero, the gain is zero, but the resistance is three. So there's a lot of resistance to trampling here where they don't quite grow as fast. Yet this set of reeds has a growth rate of two and a gain and resistance of one. Or this set of reeds has a growth rate of four, a gain of one, and a resistance of three. So this is a pretty solid growth right here. This is a nice set of reeds. And what happened is, you know, you want to basically grow these up and get new sets of the seed packets by crossbreeding. And crossbreeding is pretty simple and straightforward. Let's go into that now. So I'm standing here next to some melons and some reeds that are fully grown. And I can analyze them and see that they have some decent results on their uh, attributes there. If I place down a crop, like so, and then place down another crop right on top of it, we'll get a cross pattern, as you can see. This cross pattern is what we use to crossbreed the two plants that are adjacent to this cross pattern crop. So right now it's going to try and crossbreed the reeds with the pumpkins. Pretty cool. And you've got a pretty random result in terms of what you're going to get out of this crossbreeding. You might get a type of reed, you might get a type of pumpkin, or you might get an entirely new plant altogether. It's a little bit random, but definitely pretty cool. And once you've crossbreeded successfully, as you can see here, there's actually a new type of plant being grown. And if I right click on it, it tells me it's an unknown crop. So I want to wait for this to grow all the way before harvesting it, and then try and identify it using the crop analyzer, hoping that it drops seeds. In preparation for this video, I was able to crossbreed a couple different things. Uh, first off, I've got this interesting little looking plant here, and if I analyze it, and I've already analyzed the seeds on this guy and replanted it, we see it's a blackthorn, an interesting type of flower. And if we harvest it by right-clicking, you'll notice that we just got some ink sacs. And because, like the pumpkins and melons, when you right-click, it's going to maintain the plant, and you just get the results of the item. We've got our two ink sacs here and we'll be able to let this thing regrow and produce some more ink sacs. So here we have a plant that was recently crossbreeded. It was a crossbreed between the melons that I had here a moment ago and the pumpkins. And we look like we have another set of pumpkins here. So let's knock this guy off and it looks like we got regular old pumpkin seeds. We weren't lucky and got a seed packet. So getting a seed packet is a little bit of luck, but for the most part you typically tend to get them. Finally I should mention weeds. Weeds are a huge problem. If you leave a crop planted in your ground, just like so, and don't plant any seeds in it, there's a chance that weeds will grow. You're going to want to keep an eye out for these guys, and I'll show you in a few minutes once they do grow what they look like. Here's another crossbreed. It looks like we got reeds combined with pumpkins gave us melons. If we break this guy off here and analyze our new unknown seeds that we got from the melons, let's see what we've got. Definitely melons. Growth rate of 4, gain of 2, and resistance of 1. So those are some pretty good melons, as a matter of fact. They'll grow a lot faster than other melons will. I'm going to go ahead and plant them right here. And let's not forget to fertilize them and give them some water. So it looks like this plant right here finally finished growing. And if I knock it off the vine, it looks like it was another one of those ink sac plants. And if we analyze the seeds again, let's get our battery ready. definitely black florin. And this one has a growth rate of two, a gain of, or I'm sorry, a growth rate of three, a gain of two, and a resistance of one. If we go compare that to our existing black thorn sitting over here, this one has better gain but less growth rate. Interesting. So we might as well plant these seeds somewhere and get them growing. Here might be a good spot. Very nice. 
And just a quick thing to note, you can use energy crystals in your crop analyzer. Something you guys might want to know also is that there's apparently 16 different crops that are hidden and available for growth. So there's 16 types of crops that you could get as a result of crossbreeding that have all kinds of different functions. Drops range from sticky resin to iron dust to all kinds of other crazy stuff to poison. And there are some plants that have certain effects on you, like poisoning you. So be careful. And it looks like we've got some weed growth. This is the... Uh, baby version of weeds, I guess you could say. They'll grow up a little bit more and be larger, and eventually they'll randomly start taking over other crops, um, anything that has double sticks growing on it, uh, over in your other areas. So these weeds might spread and destroy this crop. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for weeds like this and destroy them by left clicking as soon as possible. Make sure not to leave any crops laying in your fields that don't have some kind of seeds going in them. For example, right here. You should definitely have a crossbreed going to make sure these two crossbreed, or at least have some kind of seeds planted. So this wraps up the Industrial Craft 2 tutorial for agriculture. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope you enjoy it. Take it easy.